Welcome back, Nick Lynn. Just more review episode number 121. This time I'm viewing the fourth MCU film, Thor, released in 2011. And here it is. Now you're probably thinking, wait, that's not a regular DVD case. It looks like some bootleg thing. Well, this is how I got, this is how I received this film for Christmas. Like this. Uh, don't blame me for this. Blame whoever gave me this for Christmas. Now, with this particular film, we see live action view pretty much a lot of Thor characters. Well, aside from Thor himself, which is technically this is his second live action appearance. His first appearance was in The Incredible Hulk Returns. And, well, despite the fact you can definitely say he kind of looks like Thor, he kind of acts like him. For some reason, they made Donald Blake and Thor two separate people, as ever should have anybody, and Mjolnir is smaller than it's supposed to be. Yeah, I have no idea why. My guess is a low budget. That's my personal guess, anyways. And plus, no Thor villains. I mean, you have Thor and Hulk show up, and you don't have any Thor villains. Yep. This one cup does have Thor villains. Now, as few times I've seen this film, I have never seen fully the beginning of this movie. For what I know about the beginning, apparently Frost Giants show up in Asgard during the coronation ceremony of Thor becoming the king of Asgard, which he doesn't get anyways. And in case you're wondering, does he wear his helmet from the comics? Yes. Wears it for the opening scene and doesn't wear a helmet again until Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, he tosses the Jack Kirby helmet aside just because. Of course, for this film, we get the first... Now, Thor is played by Chris Hemsworth. We also have his father, by the awesome Anthony Hopkins. His mother, I should say his stepmother, played by Rene Russo. Yeah, for some reason, some writers forget, though, that Frega is not Thor's biological mother. Nope, it is Mother Nature herself, Gaia. Yeah, I have no idea why the film did this for, but they did. They made her his biological mother, despite the fact this is not her mother. His mother. We also see Loki, the Warriors 3, and Lady Sif. Loki, of course, by the awesome Tom Hiddleston. Lady Sif, played by. Uh. I think, what was her name? Yeah, she's also the star of. I think it's like. Blank, I think it is. Um. Now, in case you're wondering about the armor for Thor Wars movie, yeah, this is the armor he was wearing at the time in the comic books, basically the long sleeve look. Yeah, he was actually wearing this at the movie came out. So, yep. She is played by... Let's see. Jamie Alexander. Yep. Now, Fenor Hogan and now the Warriors three are played by Josh Dallas, who plays Fenor Hogan is played by Tapsa Asano. I think I pronounced the person's name. Mm -hmm. Ray Stevenson plays. The chubby one. We also have he plays Volstag. We also have Idris Alba as Heimdall. Let's and we also have a few other characters. We have Jane Foster played by Natalie Portman. Yes. The thing with this is the whole thing with Natalie Portman and Th and her version of Jane Foster and Thor. Yes. This particular couple was on a relationship list of the top eleven. On-screen couples who have zero chemistry. What, and she opened the list twice. One, of course, and this is an obvious one, Anakin Skywalker and Pammy Amidala. Two characters have zero chemistry with each other, and yet these two are the fa parents of the two of the three characters from the original trilogy. And you also have this. Yep. We also had the first episode of Eric Staubig. Which, by the way, he is not a character from the comics. He is actually a movie. He's a movie original character. Mm -hmm. Yep. He did, however, show up in the comics later. Yep. He made his appearance with the storyline. 
the the storyline that that Nick Spencer did before uh, Assault on Pleasant Hill. Yes, that's when he first showed up in the comics. Yeah, that's pretty much when he first showed up in the comic books. Yeah, yeah, with Standoff, the Assault on Pleasant Hill. Yeah, that's pretty much basically when he first showed up. Yeah, he was on the comics for like a year prior to him killing himself by kissing a cosmic cube. Yep. So yeah, you bring in a movie-based character, and Nick Spencer kills him off after like one year being around. Yep, waiting five years after the character's debut on screen, and yet, well, there's that. Aside from this film, he appears in the following film, and he also appears in the first two Avenger movies, and that's it for the character. Characters never return for Thor Ragnarok for some reason, yes. Yeah, as far as I could tell, they never explained the reasoning for it at all. Yeah. Now, he's not the only one who is a virtual character in this movie. We also have Darcy Lewis, hit by Kat Dennings, who is Jane Foster's turn. And here's kind of the thing. I mean, if you watch her chemistry with, with Chris Helms, I think she has more. I think Helms has more chemistry with Darcy than he does with Jane Foster, a woman who's supposed to be his love interest. But here's kind of the thing that the director of the film, which I was, the first film, like the other Marvel movies, who had maybe like two directors, they kept changing directors every movie. Yes, I'm not kidding about this. Like they, they it, this film is it, it's basically Canada Braga. Which they replace it with the sequel with somebody else. Yeah. Oh yeah, and get this. Story of this film was done by JMS. Yes, which kind of makes sense because he was one of the more recent writers of the Thor comic book. And plus, the guy's written for, for TV movies before, so it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and the other writer for this movie is... Mike Parsons. I don't know who this guy is, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, the film basically, after the whole assault on Asgard by Frost Giants, one of two times it happens, yep, then of course, well, Thor is basically mad that, well, Frost Giants basically attacked and his father won't do anything about it. Yeah, no idea why Odin acts this way for, but he does, he acts very secretive. It's revealed that he actually did attack the Frost Giants years prior and stole a baby for them. Who was the baby? Loki! Yep, Loki was that particular baby. He's revealed to be a Frost Giant despite the fact he's human looking yeah it's never been totally explained yeah the whole thing of loki being the son of a frost giant that's pulled directly from the comic books and i love how asgard looks and it looks so good they use some cgi in this movie but it looks really good mm -hmm. yep so basically thor loki lady sif and the warriors three go to attack the frost giant's home world of jonaheim i thought it was a different name, but this actually is the name of the, the thing. So they attack him, and they're basically they look like about to lose. And Odin shows up, and well, instead of basically agreeing with with Thor with, with his actions, he basically disagrees. So everyone goes off, do whatever. So basically, Odin does a thinkable. He takes away Thor's hammer, strips him of his armor, and banishes him to Earth for a brief period to teach him a lesson. And he ends up in New Mexico. Yeah, I forgot to mention this in my Iron Man 2 review. Yes, the post credit scene for that one is Phil Coulson walking to Mexico and seeing Thor's hammer. Yeah, that teases very movie. And basically, it's like an emotional journey for Thor the whole movie. So he basically arrives, he gets put to a hospital, though he gets released into the custody of, well, Jane Foster's group. And, well, he puts on proper clothing. And he takes him to a diner, drinks coffee, smashes things like, ooh, this is good. Smash it. Give me more. It's like, don't do not do that. Don't do that. It's perfectly fine. It's perfect. Yeah. And, well, Eric Stalvig notices that Jane Foster and Thor, Jane Foster is kind of falling for Thor and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. So, he kind of wants her to, him to leave town, but basically Thor is like, nah, I'm going to take you out drink and get you drunk. <laughs> Which I think is so. So, then he notices about the whole thing with is hammer being a shield facility. So Thor breaks in, goes to the guards pretty easily, comes across the hammer, tries to pull it, not able to pull it. So he gets briefly taken to custody by Phil Coulson. 
Yep, Phil Coulson. And then he gets the hallucination of Loki, telling him that their father has died because, well, he because Thor because Loki and Odin were arguing with each other, and he decided at that point to go to his Odin sleep. Apparently, it's revealed that he had been holding off going to the Odin sleep. Yeah, don't know why, but well, because he was hesitant about Loki's backstory. Now, when they show now in the flashback in the movie, they show. The vault, the Odin's vault, which this has just been shown in Thor Ragnarok and I think Thor The Dark World. Yeah, these two particular ones. Well, they show a gauntlet in there along with Doctor Strange's amulet. The gauntlet was revealed to be a fake. Yeah, it was a retcon basically revealed by Kevin Feige that the one shown in Odin's vault is actually a, a fake. Yep, it's not the actual the one. It's based upon the way you look in the comic books, yes. But, yeah, that was revealed to be a fake. And they also the castle, they have the cask of Winters in there. Dr. Strange, which I think that disappeared later on. And, well, they all behind this wall revealed to be the Destroyer Armor, which Loki himself unleashes later on in the movie. The Destroyer Armor is, believe it or not, not a creation of Stanley or Jack Kirby. I'm trying to think. I think it was created a little bit later. Yeah, which in the film, it seems like the story was like on its own. So yeah, it is crazy. Jack, Stanley, Jack, I thought it was coming from somebody else. Yeah, and knowing the comics, it's usually just a suit of armor that you transfer your mind into. In the movie, it's just a thing that moves on its own. Unknown who the host of this damn thing is, it just meant to protect Odin's vault. Yep. And you only see a couple times. But first, first time you see him taking on frost giants. Second time, Loki unleashes it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, of course, well, they're in town for a while, and then basically, Heimdall just well allows Lady Sif and the Warriors to go to Earth because they don't like what Loki's doing as the ruler of Asgard. Yeah. So. They go to Earth. Heimdall basically allows them to go perfectly fine. Just basically allows them to walk away. So they go to Earth. Unlike with Thor, where you have the crash lander, they have no problem. Excuse me. So they meet up with him, of course, in shoes. Oh, look. Hey, this is Lady Sif and the Warriors 3. Friends of his. Yep. And then not long after they get there, Loki sends a destroyer armor. So it's wrecking up this town. And the first, and when, uh, when Coulson sees, like, is this something of Starks? <laughs> Which I thought was so funny, thinking that the Star Harbor is one of Tony Stark's armors. <laughs> I think it's so funny. And of course, like, it wrecks the shield vehicles. And <laughs> then later on, after Thor gets back his hammer, of course, it's revealed via flashback, like, those worthy of the power of Thor. Yeah, it's a phrase basically printed on the Thor from the comic books, which they include in the movie. Thor gets his hammer back, gets himself armored up, beats the crap out of the destroyer. And then basically he flies, he flies Jane Foster to the landing site. And of course drives there. And he tells, he tells Coulson like, Son of Cow, we are not allies in this fight. Coulson's like, okay. So, he, so him and the Warriors 3 fly out to Asgard to deal with Loki. Who apparently is set to use the Bifrost Pits to destroy the home world of the Frost Giants. That is basically his plan. So he fights, of course Lo Loki gets pinned down by Thor during a fight with him on the Bifrost Bridge. Yep. And of course, well, Loki basically briefly relieves Heimdall by freezing him. And of course, well, they take out the Frost Giants, but the thing is, the Bifrost Bridge is going out of control, so of course, Thor has a smash thing versus his fist, and he takes the hammer and he smashes the damn thing, and basically wrecks it, but him, him and Loki are knocked up, but they're saved by Thor's father, Odin. And, well, Loki falls into the void, yeah, it's not thoroughly explained what happened to him. Apparently, he ended up with Thanos after this. Yeah, it's never been thoroughly explained exactly what happened to him. So, things been saved, of course. With, of course, and we have Heimdall basically watching Jane Foster, thinking though, well, battle was up with for now, anyways. But in case you want what happens next, uh, well, it's kind of revealed between movies that for a couple things. One, his next appearance being 
in Avengers, but he also been cleaning up a lot of mess, basically, that's happening throughout the Nine Realms. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the movie itself in a nutshell. I'm sure I'm probably missing some stuff, but this movie is actually... Oh, I almost forgot. This film is also not worthy for the first appearance of Hawkeye. Yes, which kind of does not make any sense for him to show up here, because... Black Widow makes sense, show up in Iron Man 2, because her first appearance was an Iron Man story, so that makes sense. Why Hawkeye show up in, in, in a Thor movie? Yeah, this makes absolutely no sense to do. Yes. Which is kind of weird when you think about it, yeah. But great movie overall, 9 out of 10. Next movie review, review of Captain America, First Avenger, released after this film. Now, in the case of the Thor comic itself, the very year this movie was released, um, I think, yeah, it was relaunched number one the very same year, but was relaunched as the Mighty Thor for like 22 issues. Yeah, relaunched by Matt Fraction, which was released as a tie in for this movie. And the triple digit numbering for Thor became Journey's Mystery, with Loki in charge. Yep. That's what happened. All right. So yeah, that's it for this review. I have one more review I'm going to do, and that's a view of movie review, review of Captain America: The First Avenger. Okay. Do this next view. Bye.